welcome back to my channel in this video we will be talking about the sun's radiation solar radiation refers to the electromagnetic radiation emitted by the sun a proportion of this energy reaches the outer part of the earth's atmosphere and then penetrates it to reach the surface the energy received by the Earth from the Sun is known as incoming solar radiation or insulation. This energy fuels or our climatic system as well as our ecosystem. The diagram shows that not all of the insulation actually reaches the Earth's surface. As solar radiation penetrates the atmosphere, some of it is absorbed, some is reflected, and some is scattered. Radiation is absorbed by atmospheric elements such as ozone, and clouds. When radiation is absorbed, it increases the temperature of the object which absorbs it. Clouds and dust also reflects radiation, sending it back in the direction from which it is coming. Scattering occurs when some of the radiation is diverted by molecules of gases in the atmosphere. Now, absorption, reflection, and scattering results in some of the incoming solar radiation being lost. The rest reaches the surface either directly or as diffused radiation. On reaching the surface, some of the radiation is absorbed while the rest is reflected. The ratio between the incoming solar radiation, which is absorbed, and the amount reflected is expressed as a percentage and is known as albedo. In other words, albedo is the degree of reflectivity. So for example, the darker surfaces generally absorb more radiation than they reflect while light surfaces reflect more radiation than they absorb. Albedo therefore varies from place to place. Over oceans and dark soil, the albedo is less than 10 percent. Over coniferous forest and urban areas, it is about 15 percent. For grasslands and deciduous forest, it is 25 percent or thereabout. Over light-colored deserts, it is 40 percent or thereabout, while over fresh snow, it is about 85%. Albedo also varies over different types of clouds. So thin clouds, like cirrus clouds, for example, have albedos of between 30 to 40%. Some of these thin clouds have halos as they have less ref reflectivity and the sun actually shines uh, through them. Thicker stratus clouds have albedos of between 50 to 70 percent. Cumulus, cumulonimbus clouds, which are associated with heavy rains, have albedos of about 90 percent. 
So in the presence of these cumulonimbus clouds, very little or no sunlight enters and the sky is usually very dark. Now, while the incoming solar radiation is shortwave radiation, the radiation which is transmitted from the surface as outgoing infrared radiation is long wave radiation. Greenhouse gases in the troposphere will respond differently to the incoming solar radiation from the way they respond to the outgoing infrared radiation. The greenhouse gases will behave invisible to the incoming solar radiation, simply allowing them to penetrate while they absorb the infrared radiation from the Earth's surface. And this is what gives the atmosphere its temperature. The amount of solar radiation received at the Earth's surface varies in both time and space. Let's now examine some of the factors which influence the distribution of incoming solar radiation. Places like the Caribbean, which are located in low latitudes near the equator, generally receive more insulation than places like Canada, which are located in higher latitudes near the poles. This is because the sun strikes the surface more directly at places near the equator, while it reaches the surface near the poles at a lower angle. To reach the poles, the radiation has to pass through a thicker atmosphere, as we can see in the diagram. So more radiation will be lost through absorption, scattering, and reflection. However, since the radiation going towards the equator travels over a shorter distance, less radiation is lost through absorption, scattering, and reflection. Another factor is seasonal changes. The Earth revolves around the sun while tilted on its axis. Thus, the overhead sun appears to migrate from the Tropic of Cancer in June to the Tropic of Capricorn in December. In the summer, the overhead sun is higher in the sky, so more energy is concentrated in a smaller area. As such, the amount of solar energy received is greater. In the winter, when the overhead sun is at a lower angle, the solar energy has to be shared over a wider area, so less solar energy is received in any one place. As the height of the mountains increase, there is less area. The smaller the surface, the less solar energy which can be received. In other words, places at a lower altitude will receive more radiation than places at higher altitudes. A 
aspect is the direction that a place faces. Hillsides can alter the angle at which the sun's rays hit the surface. Slopes which face the sun directly will receive more radiation than those which are in the shadow of higher slopes or which are turned away from the sun. Land and sea differ in their ability to absorb solar radiation. The sea is more transparent than the land and can therefore absorb radiation down to a depth of 10 meters. The sea requires a greater amount of energy to raise its temperature than does the land. This is known as the specific heat capacity. During the summer, the sea heats up more slowly than the land. The sea also heats up more in the day than in the night. However, the sea also loses heat more slowly than the land at nights and in the summer. The amount of insulation received also varies based on the length of day and night. Insulation is received only when the sun is facing, sorry, when the surface of the earth is facing the sun, or in other words, when it is daytime. Due to changes in the season, Places in higher latitudes vary in the length of day. Places near the poles experience times in the winter where there is 24 hours of darkness. They also experience times in the summer where there is 24 hours of sunshine. Places at or near the equator experiences no seasonal variation as day and night are generally of equal length throughout the year. Another factor that influences the amount of insulation that is received at the surface is cloud cover. The presence of cloud cover reduces insulation. As we have already discussed, clouds have the ability to absorb, reflect, as well as scatter incoming solar radiation. The thicker the clouds, the more radiation is absorbed, reflected, or, re or scattered. In tropical deserts where there are very few clouds, more insulation is received at the surface. In equatorial areas where there are thick clouds, insulation is reduced at the surface okay so we have come to the end of this video thanks so much for watching remember to like and to share this video as well as to subscribe to geography journey